too loud. Hi everyone, I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. Just give me a quick yes in the chat if you can see and hear me and then we'll start the session. Hi Vinod, how are you doing? So great. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is the tokenization of loyalty points and reward points. Now, on the face of it, it's a very simple kind of a use case. But let's just try to get deeper into it. And then I'm also going to talk about a very interesting uh, legal development in India, which makes it easier to tokenize such kind of assets. Hi Ravindra, hi Ame, sorry Ame. Vinod, Pankaj, Gaurav. So when we talk about loyalty points or reward points, I'm sure all of you have credit cards or debit cards or, you know, such kind of schemes where when you buy a particular product, so let's say you walk into a coffee shop and you buy a cup of coffee. Along with that, you get some points, which is based on how much money you've spent. And then those points can be used for discounts or free stuff, either at the same merchant or then maybe even other merchants. So for example, if you get this with a credit card, you may be able to use it across a wide range of other companies like airlines, hotels, restaurants, cafes, and others. Hi, Abhishek. So now first question obviously would be that why would we want to tokenize something like this, which is so common all over the world anyway? Why bring in the blockchain here? And the number one reason is to make it easily transferable. Let me explain what that means. So if I go to a particular coffee shop and they give me points which are only valid in that chain, it may not be so useful for me as a consumer because I also go to other places. So imagine if I had loyalty points that I could transfer to anybody else in the world and then it becomes easy for me as a consumer to buy and sell loyalty points of different brands. So somebody else in the world who has loyalty points which give a discount on shoes could sell it to somebody who has loyalty points for coffee or the person with loyalty points for shoes could just sell it at a discount to somebody who actually wants it. And the same thing would apply to gift cards. So gift cards are, you know, when we talk about, let's say you go to Amazon or one of these stores and you pay money up front or even Starbucks and they give you this coupon, could be digital or paper based, and then you can gift it to someone and then they only can go back to that particular store to reimburse it. Now the problem is what if I don't want to go to that store or that particular chain? I'm kind of stuck with it and a huge amount of money is actually lost every year because people don't use these gift cards. Now for the issuer it's good news because they've got the money and no one's going to take the goods in return. So they make a pure profit on it. But from a consumer's point of view that's obviously not a good thing. So if we bring all these kinds of separate loyalty programs and even gift cards onto a blockchain and then everybody has tokens which they can very easily exchange. So like today when you use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, thousands of tokens can be swapped for another one. Now imagine similarly if you could swap loyalty points or these kind of reward cards or gift cards, wouldn't that really be convenient? So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Does it make sense? Is this a use case that you would actually be interested in using? Give me a quick yes or no in the chat and then I'm also going to share a very interesting law which has been made in India which makes it easier for people to do these kinds of things with loyalty points. So let me just share my screen. Now uh, here if you look at it last year this was 30th of June 2022 when the Indian crypto law came in where it basically said that cryptocurrencies are considered as virtual digital assets and there was a 30% tax on them straight, which means every time you make a profit on a crypto deal, you pay 30%. Next time, if you make a loss, you can't actually reimburse that. So, you know, in other businesses, you can always set up a loss and then pay the tax, but not for crypto. Now, the government had clarified last year itself that certain kinds of virtual digital assets will not be taxed like this. And if you can see it here, the first one is gift cards or vouchers being a record that may be used to obtain goods or services or a discount on goods or services. 
So things like the prepaid vouchers or gift cards of say an Amazon or a Starbucks would come under this category. The second one is mileage points, reward points or loyalty card. So, you know, whether it's from an airline, whether it's from your petrol pump or it's from a cafe anywhere, if it's a mileage point, a reward point or loyalty card, being a record given without direct monetary consideration under an award, reward, benefit, loyalty, incentive, rebate or promotional program that may be used or redeemed only to obtain goods or services or a discount on goods or services. So it cannot be that you can get money back for it directly from the issuer of the loyalty card. But if you can get discounted goods or services, then it would come under this category and it would not be directly taxed. So this was the law that I wanted to share with you guys. So what it really tells us is that if somebody wants to get into this business and you want to tokenize these kinds of things, the benefit you get is you're not going to be considered as a cryptocurrency or a virtual digital asset and that 30 percent tax you needn't bother about so i think it can be a very good opportunity uh, let's take a question so abhishek says we are building a reward token for our community which people can earn from games and use it to redeem our merchandise is it legal okay see first of all i'd like to clarify that even if it comes under cryptocurrency it's not illegal it's just that there is a tax on it so now the question is that we are building this reward token, let's say for community. Now people can earn from games. So question number one that would come in, do they have to pay for these games or are the games free of cost? Now in both scenarios, whether you are charging for the game or not, the person is earning the loyalty point for playing the game. So that part clearly is settled as per the law. And the second one is it is being redeemed against merchandise. So again, merchandise would come under goods and services. So I would say 99.99% Abhishek, this would not attract the 30% tax and you would get the benefit of this particular law. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to share the link for this. It's a link from the income tax side of government of India. You all can just download that. So you have the exact notification with you so that at the end of the year, if a query is raised, about why particular taxes are not paid you can show this document and you can also share it with your advisors and consultants so they also understand under what grounds we are saying that you're not liable for the 30 percent tax which is otherwise applicable on virtual digital assets any other questions just put them here yeah abhishek most welcome so in fact now if you look abhishek at this particular uh, what you are creating here so why not try to also tie up with other communities for example so right now you're saying you play a game on my platform and then i give you these points which you can redeem against merchandise from my platform but now let's say say a mcdonald's or a coffee day or a starbucks suppose they also accept your loyalty points and they say okay people from who have earned the loyalty points by playing these games you can also get some kind of discounts on our product so it adds a lot of value to your players as well as it drives business to others so I would strongly recommend try to do it in such a way that it becomes more collaborative. So try to uh, look at it, you know, these people who are playing your games, what are the other products that they are regularly buying? So try to tie up with people who provide those extra services. So if you feel a lot of them, for example, are bikers, then what about discounts on actually buying motorbikes or even leather jackets or helmets, for example. So the more people that you bring into your system, the more powerful your loyalty points become. The smaller the ecosystem, the less powerful it is. The bigger the ecosystem, the better. And again, when you're doing this on a blockchain, then it is also easy for people to swap it for any other kind of a loyalty program. Is there anybody else who's working on any such kind of a project? Uh, another thing what I really like about this pro these kind of projects when it comes to loyalty and all is it's very simple to implement. So if you want to, for example, make a minimum viable product around this, it's fairly simple because you don't even actually need an uh, uh you know user interface here you just have the api layer because any business today which is offering and accepting loyalty points or giving out these kind of uh, gift coupons they already have a tech system in place so it is already connected to their uh, you know billing systems so every time that they bill someone it could hit your api and the transaction could also happen on that so you don't even have to spend time money and energy building the user interface it would simply be the API that would be more than enough. 
So I hope Abhishek, you do well at it and do let me know what kind of things worked out. And is there anybody else who's working on a similar project? Or if there are any other questions, you can share them with me. Today, I'm guessing it's going to be a shorter session because it's a simpler use case. When we spoke about other use cases like real estate and all, there were a lot more complications. But when it comes to loyalty programs, they're a lot simpler. Let me just quickly share that law with you again to clarify a couple of points that I want you to remember. So one point for us to remember is that if it is going to be things like gift cards or vouchers, then they are considered a record that may be used to obtain goods or services or a discount on goods or services. So that's another very important thing for us to remember. So make sure your gift card doesn't relate to say a Bitcoin because that would not come under these goods or services. So ideally it should be, so services means it could be a haircut. Goods means it could be a phone, for example, but make sure it is something like that. And when we are talking about the second category, then it could be mileage point, reward point, loyalty point, but it is a record given without direct monetary consideration. What that means is people should not pay you directly to get the loyalty points. They have to pay you for something else and in return, they also get loyalty points. So suppose they are paying you to pay your game. So they pay you 100 rupees, they play the game and then you give them 10 loyalty points. That's okay. But if they give you 100 and then you give them loyalty points worth 100, it would not come under this category and that would be considered like a cryptocurrency or a virtual digital asset and the tax would be liable. So they should pay you for something else and in return also get these loyalty points which could be considered an award, reward, benefit, loyalty, incentive, rebate or promotional program and what can it be redeemed for again not for cash so they can't come back to you and sell the loyalty point they can only use and redeem for goods or services or discount on goods or services so make sure you do not violate these particular clauses otherwise then that whole 30 percent liability is going to come let's take another one from abhishek i know some big uh, move to earn platforms having entire revenue model on partner based loyalty programs yeah that, that's pretty amazing so that's kind of the thing for which this is set up so you have these kind of platforms like move to earn where let's say if you walk right based on how many kilometers you walk or how many steps you take you get some points which can then be in exchanged for maybe shoes or maybe some other kind of sports gear so yes, that is definitely something that would come under this particular exemption and it wouldn't come under the virtual digital asset. Do you have any other questions or if you have questions on any other kind of uh, tokenization, sure, we can take it right now. Uh, the next week I will not be doing a lecture for tokenization because I will be doing the whiskey tokenization masterclass. So if you guys are interested in that, you'll have to apply for it. There's no cost, but it's by invitation only. So just connect to Hi-Fi team on any of our social uh, channels. And uh, if you get invited, then I'll see you directly on that session. So because it's a private session, it will not happen here on social media. It will happen on Zoom. Uh, Rian has a question. I'm a second year student from NIT, NFT enthusiast. I have an idea, but don't know how to start. Sure, Rian, why don't you tell us more about the idea here in the chat and I'll try to guide you about what you're trying to do. So while we're waiting for Rian to put in his points, that you guys would like to discuss and like i say if any of you want to come on this show and discuss your experiences with tokenization just get in touch with me i'd love to host some of you i also get bored of being the only one speaking here so i look forward to somebody else who'd like to share the session and uh, the reason i'm constantly talking about tokenization because i believe that's probably the best blockchain use case i've ever seen and it's already beginning to take a lot of traction so in fact today i did a blog post about some of the very interesting blockchain projects that are working on tokenization. So uh, many of them are working on tokenizing bonds. So, you know, debt instruments, government bonds, as well as corporate bonds. So bonds are like loan. When a company takes a loan or a government take a, takes a loan, they give you a bond in return. And that's the instrument. So they're tokenizing that instrument, making it easy for people to buy and sell it. Uh, another interesting use case that I uh, came across, of course, there's a lot of real estate related use cases. So in some cases, you're buying the real estate as part of a token or in some, 
you are buying the yield of the real estate now that's a very cool idea when we did real estate discussion in this show we didn't talk about this but you are not tokenizing the actual property so it may be a commercial building or something you're not tokenizing the building you are tokenizing the rental from the building so from a legal point of view it becomes much easier because there may be laws in different countries saying who can and cannot buy the property but what if we are only tokenizing the revenue yield so suppose we say that this property over the next one year is going to generate x amount of rental now what you are doing is you are buying out the rental three years in advance so as the owner of the property i get the three years of rent in advance of course i will give it to you at a discount you will then recover your money every month when the rent actually comes so that's called rental yields and i think that's a very cool idea so if anybody is working in that direction or you're working in real estate tokenization i would like you to think about this and i think that's something really cool and workable and then of course there are other kinds of things that people are also tokenizing which is like around capital raising private equity shares of startups and all that and of course at whiskey fractions we are tokenizing cas of scotch whiskey so these are some of the projects that are already happening abhishek says if we are allowing exchange for these loyalty points with a tradable token in future for users okay so uh, abhishek that's an interesting question so now your loyalty point is covered by the exemption but when you are making a separate token that token in all probability would come under the definition of cryptocurrency and any profit that someone makes on that token is going to have the 30% tax again i'd like to clarify i'm not saying it's illegal i'm simply saying it attracts that taxation see the indian law is very uh, actually i would say liberal like for example if you look at the dubai law specifically certain kinds of cryptocurrencies have been banned so uh, algorithmic stable coins for example or uh, privacy coins they are banned in india there is no ban whatsoever so whether it is monero or bitcoin nothing is banned but what you have to remember is we constantly talk about the 30% tax so your loyalty points will not be taxed but your tradable token that would come under the definition of virtual digital asset and that would be liable for the 30% tax uh rian's uh, idea is basically it's a digital nft concept for digital status there is no digital status in current social media platforms except for a blue tick sure i, I understand what you're trying to say that's pretty interesting so now of course blue ticks have also kind of lost out their importance because you can buy a blue tick earlier you had to kind of earn it and of course that was very unfair also because it was totally up to the platform who they want to give it to or who they don't want to give it to Uh, so your idea is quite interesting where you're saying that you are giving people a digital status well again if we look at the law that i just discussed probably this would not get the benefit of that so it would come under the 30% tax so now let's take an example that somebody comes to you and they buy this digital status token from you and they pay you x amount of money now for you that entire money is going to be considered as a profit so according to me 99.9% you would come and you would be liable under the 30% so while it's an interesting idea what you're trying to do it would come under the taxation but that shouldn't stop you from running the idea i mean you should definitely go ahead with it it sounds pretty cool so you got to just figure out how is it that that status is going to be awarded because you would need some kind of a tight integration with the social platform so if it's twitter you need to integrate their apis and they kind of need to give you certain permissions to pull in certain kinds of data and there would be a cost to that from the platform and then some platform may not even give you that kind of access so that's another thing that you got to keep in mind but otherwise it's a cool idea i wish the best i hope you have a success at that is there anything else you guys have in mind any other questions okay i don't see any other questions so So, like I said, next week is going to be the master class. In fact, uh, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but let me just share the URL. So, if any of you would like to attend that master class, uh, hold on. I'll share a URL with you. You can read about what the master class is, and then you just apply for it. I'll, it's there's a WhatsApp number that you can ping us on. 
and if you're invited you can attend that so i'll see you there next week can i just put the url yeah i put the url here so when you go there you can read all about the class what is going to be and uh, also how to apply for it so in that case then i'll see you in that master class next week otherwise then i'll be back next to next friday and do let me know what other topics you'd like me to discuss okay take care bye bye